Here we are, episode 55. Yes, right, we record these in a row. You probably already figured that out on Find Music. Hey, here's something you might not know, because this is fresh news about Find Music. Uh, we now have a group on Facebook. I just wanted to show you that page and invite you to join us. Already, I've learned some things from people. I think I can show that off real quick. Well, yeah, they, oh, yeah, they were, that's right. They put them in the comments to my list. I, I made a list. Uh, what spurred this list? It must have been last week's episode that I did. It was instrumental acts, right? And so I started looking at my collection, wondering how much do I have in terms of instrumentals and I found 181 different instrumentals <laughs> acts. Of, they're not all instrumental acts. I mean, you know, some of these are very famous. And some of them are very obscure. There we go. Uh, like the very first one, right? Argana Stradgard. No one's ever heard of them, but I'm recommending them. And their best song is Almendraga. Start there and... Yeah. They will seep into your soul. And if I haven't mentioned them already, I think I did. Amorphous Androgynous, the lovers. And of course, they are really the future sound of London. Okay, so enough about that. So I just made a big bad list. Uh, I'm, I'm going to name a couple more names. Number 16, Brian Bennett. Ever heard of him? Probably mm -hmm. not. What makes this one so strange is it's disco jazz. Okay. Talk about a strange combination, but he makes it work. He only did one album. And right next to it is one of my uh, finds. I uh, probably talked about that one before too, Julius Brockington. That is just that mega rare album he did called The United Chair. Talk about a strange name for an album. The United Chair. And... Uh, that was his second album. His first album was jazz covers of top 40 hits, actually. Hmm. And this one is jazz originals. These are jazz originals, and they're just spectacular. And then after that, he got religion, and he started doing gospel albums. Hmm. But he only did the one jazz album. So it's a real collector's item. If you can find it, let me know. <laughs> yeah, because it's just not available. OK. Steamroll through that list. There, that's good steamrolling. <laughs> oops, whoops, whoops. I could stop anywhere on the list. It's, yeah, number 149. It's uh, a rare example of a remake being better than the original. And I dare anybody to disagree with me. I'm sure you've all heard of Tangerine Dream. Mm. Uh, they had their 70s phase when they were at their most creative. And then after that, they started getting a little bit too new agey. And this particular song kind of falls in between. It's called Love on a Real Train. Kind of a strange title, if you think about it. That's from Risky Real, Business. On a Real Train? As opposed to, okay. And, uh, you know, there's, their version is all fine. But then this guy comes along and he calls himself State Azure. And he just blows their version out of the water. It's mm. just, you watch it on YouTube. I'll put that as my YouTube recommendation. Watch State Azure's version of Tangerine Dreams, Love on a Real Train, and you will see what I'm raving about. And then, uh, perversely, number 154, I discovered this because my my dear mother, who is uh, getting older every day, is uh, a horribly strong, uh, what's his name? Uh, KC, what's his name? Uh, KC, KC and the Sunshine Band. Band. I think his name is KC. But... And uh, so, you know, okay, uh, I'll give her, you know, I'll buy some music, make a disc for her so she can enjoy it. And when I was there, there was this one disc, this one record that came out before they were called KC and the Sunshine Band, back when they were just the Sunshine Band, strictly instrumental. Hmm. But if you know anything about his sound, 
that band sound. This completely has that sound, utterly and completely. It's just without vocals. Surprisingly good. In fact, dare I say better? I don't want to offend any fans, but check it out. The Sunshine Band and the best song for me on that album is Funky 75. Okay. You heard it here. All right. Now I can finally get off that list and go to the comments because this is uh, really what I was hoping would happen. People would turn me on to things I know nothing about. And here's what I knew nothing about. Paul Anka This has an instrumental. Did anybody know this? That he wrote. He wrote this instrumental. It's called Aldous. Well, Why? Yeah, I don't know. Music. He wrote. Yeah, well, yeah, he wrote those some major classics. I know. You're having my baby, my way, and all that. It's just, I know because he's a standard crossword puzzle answer that's like, <laughs> all yeah. his, his name fits song. puzzles very well. And Anka. they're all, you know, all these very popular songs that I never associated with Paul Anka, but the answer is always yeah. Anka. <laughs> he's a versatile dude. Yeah, I was very surprised. It was very good. All right. So, uh, Neil Sadaka is like that too. Yeah. He has instrumentals. No, I don't think he has instrumentals. It's just he's written a bunch of stuff that you'd never know he wrote. That it was by him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to thank Michael Gonzalez, our new member, Michael Gonzalez, for giving us that. And uh, Charlotte, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but she said that there's a, a band called Trampled by Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of this? No. Uh, yeah, neither have I. And uh, they have an instrumental called Sounds Like a Movie, and another one called Don't Look Down. So they were surprisingly good. That's Sampled by really turtles, funny. you'd think every every one of their songs would be really long. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you mean they're very patient? <laughs> yeah, players. patient tramplers. All right. And then there's this dude I've known for a long time, Kevin Livingston. He, too, was a uh, substitute teacher in LA Unified for some years. And uh, I always knew he had a musical background. Uh, and uh, his three recommendations, right? One is very obvious, Bex Bolero. To me, that was too easy. I had to do something more obscure on my list. I've got Earthquake, which is really rocks by Jeff Beck. Then he's got uh, one you might've heard of, Link Ray and the Raymond, Jack the Ripper. Yeah. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna bring up, his third comment, if it comes up, there it is. Uh, this name rings a huge bell. Wasn't he in a band, Jack? Jack Nietzsche, he was a producer. Yes. Yeah. He did a lot of work with the Stones. And arranger, did some stuff yeah. with uh, Neil Young. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're, you're right. I've seen this name before, yeah. A lot so of he Young apparently work. has albums as well. Yeah. He, Thomas, Thomas is the name that comes up in my mind. Thomas, is that his name? Jack what? Thomas? He did arranging for a, a number of things for reprise records, and then he, uh, he later in his career, he worked with even uh, Mink DeVille or Willie right. DeVille. Right, right, that's right, that's right. And then another thing man. he did is uh, he did a lot of the soundtrack of the movie performance. Oh, that's uh, right. Instrumentals yeah. on performance. So oh, I'm learning. Gonna check out some interesting instrumentals by uh, Jack Nietzsche. Look up the soundtrack to performance. That Thank is a great Murray. album, that soundtrack. Yeah. I mean, it also oh, has, wow. it has Randy Newman singing a um, Ry Cooter song. Um, it also has The Last Poets. It has, it's a great soundtrack album. Wow. Okay. I had to write that one down. I don't want to miss that one. <laughs> Oh, man, this is why we're doing this in a group. This is awesome. All right, just to finish off uh, this particular episode, uh, I invite anyone who's interested, join the group, find music, and you can make posts as well. Uh, I'm trying to encourage people to do that. Uh, Chris Sorrenti from Canada told me about Pink Floyd, so I put it up there. And uh, one of the things that spurred me to do this website, other than trying to get more people to watch our videos, is uh, I saw this one. It, was just, it just came up in my YouTube recommendations, and probably because I'm a big Roy Orbison fan. And it's uh, some group called the Linda Ronstadt Experience. 
Hmm. Right? Because Linda's not performing anymore. Right. And this group is filling that void very well. Wow. And, uh, this incredible singer, incredible musicians, they are very well done. Very well done. Okay. So things like that you can find on fine music, not just the four of us, but we're there too. See? <laughs> so easy way to find our episodes. If you don't want to hunt, 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 just go to the fine music group on Facebook and there they are. And you just click on them. So that's episode 55. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>